Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and welcome to yet another episode of Say Something Nice. <sighs> Wait, what are you talking about, man? The show where I take NBA news that you probably don't care about and give it to you anyway. Today, my topic is the Golden State Warriors. No, 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 please. <laughs> please, don't. Don't click away. All right? I see a lot of lists go down about um, off-season winners and losers. Now, a lot of people have included teams like the Thunder, uh, the Wolves, um, and the Rockets in the winner category for a lot of their off-season pickups, and teams like the Bulls, uh, the Bulls, uh, the Pacers, and the Bulls um, in their loser category for being really, really dumb. Um, but a team that seems to be flying under the radar somehow are the Golden State Warriors. The Golden State Warriors, 73-9 two years ago, um, they lost in the finals, of course, and then they said, hey, you know what, we, let's take a team that won the most games in regular season history um, and add the second best player in the world to it. Just, let's just see what happens. They did that, killed everybody, right, won the championship. Somehow, they have gotten even more talent on their roster now. Um, of course, the team is going to get better just in terms of being together longer because they added the new piece, Kevin Durant, so they had to kind of figure out, and then he got hurt during the middle of the year. So they had to figure out kind of how to fit them in. And so it wasn't really until the playoffs that we started to see them even begin to approach that kind of peak performance. Um, and so with more time together, they're going to get better. But on top of that, this team has added talent. Okay. Three moves in this offseason that blow my mind that the rest of the NBA allowed this to happen. The first move is on draft night, the Warriors bought the rights to Jordan Bell from everybody's favorite, you guessed it, Garpax and the Chicago Bulls. And honestly, with certain teams like the Knicks and the Bulls, the Magic, um, and the Kings for a while, they've kind of turned it around, you just wonder what the hell management and ownership are doing. And you wonder if other owners should start putting pressure on teams. I mean, they won't as long as they're bringing revenue, but in terms of quality, putting pressure on these teams to manage themselves uh, much better because some of these squads are jokes okay and we all know it's known in NBA circles how cheap the owners of the Chicago Bulls are and how much they want money um, so for three and a half million dollars the Golden State Warriors came and said hey we will buy Jordan Bell off of you go pick him and we'll buy him and how nobody else did this first in the first place um, but also how the Chicago Bulls just go oh okay um, it's pretty crazy to me. So the Warriors picked up Jordan Bell in the second round. Jordan Bell is a shot-blocking machine who is a versatile defender who can defend multiple positions and play small ball. Does that sound familiar to you guys? It should because he's basically going to be the Draymond green light replacement for um, bench units. Golden State Warriors picked him up $3.5 million. Eh? Not a problem. Then they picked up Omri Caspi for... As long as he's been in the league, I have always thought Caspi was going to be that foreign player who ends up on the Spurs and has big playoff moments for them in um, uh, deep playoff runs. He's just that kind of player. He gets buckets when buckets are needed to be gotten. He uh, hustles. Um, he runs the floor very well. Um, and he can see the floor pretty nicely. He's just he's just a baller. Like He's just that guy that doesn't always stand out. But every time you see him, you go, that dude can play. Um, I've been to um, a number of Kings games over the year because over the years because they are um, the local team, um, the team closest to me, the easiest to get to. Uh, and uh, every time that he was on the team, I, I'm not joking or being hyperbolic in any way. Every single game that he was involved in that I saw in person, he stood out to me as someone on the Kings roster, who even during those shit years where they were like god awful and they like fans had nothing to root for, he was the guy that you could look at on the floor and go, that dude gets it. And that dude's out there busting his butt and he's out there balling. And uh, it's just a shame that he doesn't have all these other pieces around him. So, um, in a good system like that, on a good team where he doesn't have to be, because he's never going to be like a lead the team type of guy. He's a role player, but he is a phenomenal role player. And the fact that the Warriors picked him up blows my mind, but it makes sense. But then what happened was maybe a week later, I, I mean, it might have, it must've been even less than that. 
the Warriors go and pick up Nick Young as well. <sighs> first of all, <laughs> first of all, that's a great pickup for them. He's a fantastic spot-up shooter. A lot of people clown him for um, his off-the-court stuff. And yeah, I mean, he, he's just a, 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 an interesting guy. But as a basketball player, yes, he's a chucker, but he's a good chucker, especially for the Warriors, because he's a great spot-up shooter. Um, he was the second or third best player on that Lakers team by the end of last year. Uh, and he is someone who brings a lot of talent and can actually heat up real quickly. And so they've just added another piece to their roster who can come off the bench and say, hey, one of these games, you know what, like in a, in a game five where the other guys are struggling, Nick Young comes in and knocks down four or five three-pointers and it swings the game. They just got another one of those guys. They keep finding these guys that are just perfect for them. And the other thing that's really interesting about the Nick Young signing is that now I have a real rooting interest in the Golden State Warriors, which is a weird thing for me to say because being from NorCal, um, I'm sick of the Golden State Warriors and I'm sick of the bandwagon fans of Golden State Warriors. True Golden State Warriors fans will acknowledge this. There are a ton of bandwagon fans, especially here in Northern California and especially in the Bay. There are a ton of bandwagon Warriors fans who are like old Lakers fans or weren't really into basketball. Or anything like that. The Bay has a problem. The the um, the East Bay, I'm sorry, the West Bay has a problem with um, bandwagon fans. So I'm sick of the Warriors, and I'm sick of seeing just all these bandwagon fans and all this Warriors stuff all the time that I have turned on the Warriors. When they won their first championship, I was really excited, and they're an exciting team. Um, I was like, okay, if the Spurs aren't going to do it, then the Warriors, that's fine. Um, but then I started to get real sick of them. Um... Now, I don't like the Warriors, but the fact that they have Nick Young, I just am going to be so conflicted this year because I love Nick Young. I love his personality. I love what he brings to the game of basketball in terms of entertainment value. And now he's on the Warriors, and every time he puts up crazy shots, I'm going to be, like, excited for the Warriors. Um, so I'm excited to see him get his ring. I mean, if the Warriors stay healthy, it's just like last year. If the Warriors stay healthy... Unless we have a crazy movement of talent during the year, um, they're going to win the championship. So I'm excited to see him get a title, but man, it's going to be really conflicting for me to watch this Warriors team. Somehow, this team has gotten better and more talent. They now have a higher ceiling than they did last year. That's scary. That's scary as shit. So... Might have flown under your radar because not a lot of people are talking about the Warriors because they kind of rolled over a little bit. Um, but, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So, be excited for basketball, even though we know pretty much what the finals are going to look like and who the champions are. Uh, you know, okay. So, I'm saying something nice, and uh, what are you talking about?